Oh my God. I don't have time. Mm. I don't want to digress. I want to stay with the call. There's a call already. Do you realize that in the book of Genesis, when the scope of man's authority was mentioned, you see, remember? Wait, 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 wait. If I if I say it from my head, you will not believe that is there. So Give me uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 on the board quickly. And let us make man in our image. Don't forget you have come again. Don't forget you have a meeting. Go for your meeting, please. You are released in Jesus' name. He said, let us make man in our own image. And after our likeness, I let them have dominion over the fish. So that is aquatic. Over the fowl of the air, that is atmospheric. And over the cattle. And over all the earth, that is terrestrial. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the face of the earth. In fact, in the Hebrew, what is written there is, is and over them that walk on force force that is one two three four huh? so man is not included among the possible entities that a man should have dominion over and i don't want to go there but i'm just showing you are you there do you realize that the astral realm which is the realm that satan's throne currently is is not included in this So I've created one problem. So the day I'm ready to talk about the East, I will tell you how to find battles from that place. You are not. You are not. not. <laughs> there are things that are beamed from that place. It can make a man that is ordained to be a priest, prince. To walk on foot and a servant can ride on horseback. Yesterday I saw my colleague from the office when I was still in the petroleum industry. I can tell you from statistics that the God of heaven that created Nigeria never planned that any Nigerian would be poor. If the numbers, the statistics, if they mean anything at all. That's what it means. If the numbers, if the statistics we are generating, if it means has meaning, those figures, the meaning is that no Nigerian was ordained by the God of heaven to be a poor man. But you see, <laughs> let me do that much. Where did we stop? Now. Mm. Oh. So Cain went out of the presence of the Lord. He said, I don't want to have any dealings with God. I want, don't want to have any business with God. I, I went to Lagos Business School. I did something in Harvard and Cambridge. I think I'm sufficient in myself to explore and to pioneer. I don't need that. So he left the presence of God. And he dwelt in the land of Noah. So this defiance is the same defiance that Satan defied God in the heavenly so some compatibility has been achieved so through Cain an entire system is about to be built into the earth now if I follow on with this reading you will see the things that his descendants began to establish upon the face of it and by the time we go to the book of Genesis chapter 6 the Bible says why men began to multiply it, the descendants of Cain were the ones that stole the show generations later. The guys that left God were the ones that be, were multiplying. It means that in terms of market share, 
they were the most dominant so the policies that was coming from that mountain of darkness was what covered the entire earth such that in the days of jesus jesus called satan the prince of this cosmos should i show you something quickly before we begin this our lecture the key the key to who dominates the earth realm is man so god deliberately created us in his image and after his likeness so that he can wear us through his spirit and they will become his agencies that will extend his influence upon the face of the earth we cannot talk about god's dominion god's influence on earth without talking about human beings thy people shall be willing he says in the day you can't you can't remove thy people from that equation the lord said unto my lord sit down at my right hand until i make thy enemies thy footstool that one took place in heaven and the lord shall send the rod of his strength out of zion rule thou in the midst of thine enemies then thy people as you are sending the rod of his strength as you are sending the holy ghost on the day of pentecost in the day of our power that's pentecost you're sending him he cannot fulfill that task alone he will need to have a people are you there now so you are now understanding me okay now that you are getting me faintly but i know you are not getting me very well in order for god to operate god will need a temple you know the policy that cyrus gave that was supposed to be a global policy was that a god of heaven and asked him to build him a house in order for God to have a name on earth, just like he has a name in the heavens, God needs a house. Not this, I'm, I'm using house because we want to dedicate a house on Saturday. Hmm? But God needs a house. It's, it's a dedication that led me to this scripture. Now, let's look at this house. Let's start from Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter what? Don't worry, on Saturday is for miracles. Signs and wonders. People will be happy. But before Saturday, let us do Bible study. Okay? Don't say the law. Heaven is my throne. My government is established in the heavenlies. The earth is my footstool. The earth is my passage. My throne is in heaven, but I want to pass through the earth. The earth is my footstool. Then God is asking a question what is the house? that ye build unto me and what is the place of my rest you know it is in this scripture that i would have spoken about the economy of rest the rest of spirits which i touched a little and told you that demonic spirits have no allocation for of rest and rest is one among the 12 aspects of the civilization that is in heaven now that you have a spirit there is an economy to bring rest to that your spirit but you know that's not the assignment there were two questions asked here the first question is where is the house that he built unto me second question where is the place of my rest? should i tell you something It is only in the house 
that we build for him that he can find so I told you about the unclean spirit that was casted out it was a house that he lost so he goes around looking for rest there's no rest so he begins to consider what so there are two questions what is the house that you have built for me what is the place of my rest you know i told you the issue of rest we have not finished it i just introduced it you know when you are farming you open and then you come back and close i have not closed so it's just introduction when we come into the economy of rest it's a big topic it's a, it's a, it's a big topic right but we cannot enter into it because that's not the emphasis now next verse two things god is looking for he's looking for a house is looking for rest for all those things have my hand made and all those things have been said the lord the answer to his question is what he wants to give us now. he said but to this man will i look the house we are talking about that God is saying, where is my house? That house is man. To this man will I look. Even to him that is poor. I know you have seen this before. This poverty of spirit. It's a man that acknowledges that he is insufficient in himself. Meanwhile, that is one of the requirements. If you want to explore the potential of the spiritual capital that we have in the Holy Ghost. Through dealings, you must be brought to the point where you acknowledge your spiritual inadequacy. Mm -hmm.